to you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Blessings to you, saints. We bless God for this great opportunity. Been testing this, testing one, two, testing one, two. Amen. All right. I'm back again here tonight. I want to set the agenda for the week for you. Uh, for those of you who will be able to watch this or who are watching this, I bless God for you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, record. But uh, I'm back again so we can be able to, you know, continue our topic. Uh, the segments that I'm talking about, they're called Awaken America Now. You can ask me, Michael, what about you? What about Africa? What about Europe? What about everywhere? When I talk about America, America, you know, so goes the world. So I'm delighted to be here here tonight in the name of Jesus that I can uh, bring the word of God uh, to you in the name of Jesus that I can share um, an encouragement uplifting because the time the times we live in demand for it and so I'm delighted that I can be able to uh, to do that in the name of Jesus amen amen so today we continue from where we left awakening we about a lot of things we talked about the need for us to awaken why we need to awaken why do we believe that you know it's important that we have a different outflow uh, a different stream of um, experience in our walk with God and so I'm going to continue to break down what is this awakening about first and foremost let me give you an example today the last several years we've been hearing about the word global that it's causing supposedly they're saying that it's causing you know um, the Antarctica the ice you know to melt you know it, it's causing all of those things to melt and um, a lot of uh, events that are taking place today the speed sea level is rising the sun is coaching you know uh, the ground the land in which we uh, cultivate our meat our food is also um, messed up and um, you know drying out so that means we cannot get good food nutrient food out of the ground due to global warming so nations are coming together to see what they can do to tackle global warming much of it comes from you know all of the emissions that we um, we put up in the air the gases you know that are spoiling the atmosphere we're not breathing right so the atmosphere is actually very sick you know sick and everything and before you know it you know uh, actually the biggest polluters the top 10 you know um, polluters America was one of them I think America was the third or the fourth, if I'm not mistaken. China was actually number one, Mexico number two, and uh, several other countries. Because I, I I like current uh, events, I like current news, I like to go through all of those kind of things. So guess what happens? And um, so because uh, because of everything that's taking place, um, you know, today we are having the world, the sea level rising. We've seen the fires in California and different places, and we've seen the tornadoes out, out on the rise and everything. So there is a literal awakening that's taking place on our planet. But as much as we are talking about that, so is the human soul, the humankind. There is a literal awakening that's happening on the inside of us. Okay, that you know awakening is happening on us. Uh, some of it is good and some of some of it is not you know it's what's there already if your spirit if your spirit 
um, is already ha is antagonized, you know, your spirit will awaken antagonism. If your spirit is full of the Holy Spirit, is full of God, you know, the awakening of the Holy Spirit will fill up this atmosphere. So guess what we're talking about? We're talking about a spiritual, uh, physical, um, philosophical, psychological awakening, the awareness we know. And especially ever since we stepped into the information, information age, we discovered that, you know, we are aware, we know, we know what the environment we're living in. And so uh, the information flies at the speed of light and everything like that. And so because of it, because of it, you know, you are seeing humanity, you know, at the spark of light. Anything can go viral today. Anything can spark a people today because our impulse and our way of life has literally changed. At the same time, when we go back to God's calendar time, we as a church, you know, in the natural realm, I've shown you things that are already on the brink that are taking place. But in the spiritual body of Christ, that's not the case. Mostly in the church, actually it's the opposite of what's happening in the world. On the world stage, you know, everything is moving towards an outpouring of an awakening towards something. But in the church, the indicator looks like the, 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 there is an indication of a deadness. You know, that's why when we go into the book of Revelation, we see the seven churches and the message that God writes to them. And all of them are in deep red. All of them have been given a warning to awaken, you know, to rise up, to come up again. You know, they, and, and they've been told, you know, a whole lot of the, the things that are taking place in their life. Matter of fact, let me go there right now because I still have the chance to do that. Uh, Revelation Revelation 3, glory to God, glory to God. So you're going to see exactly as the reverator, you know, uh, the first one, chapter 3, say to the angel in the church of Sardis, which is actually around Turkey, you know, uh, the things. He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name, that you're alive, but you are dead. Look at that. Look at that. One of the churches, you know, the, the, the word of God has come to it and told it, I know you're alive. You act like alive. You're breathing like you're alive. You sing like you're alive. You know, you do all of these things. Like you are literally, literally dead. You know, everything looks as though it's functioning, but it's not. Isn't that the message? today that the body of Christ needs like I told you on the world stage we're seeing the marching order people are so warm we've seen one little incident today can catch fire in different cities around the world because either people are sick and tired of being sick and tired but when we come into the house of God there is a deadness there's a lukewarm and apathy there is no movement there's no life there is no revival there's no awakening there's no anything and believe in generation right now where the church is not awake where the church is not uplifted the church is not moving into revival and nothing's literally taking place it's very 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 dangerous my friends and therefore it's important that i can be able to speak the word of god to awaken your soul and your spirit to get back up again to what god has called you to do i i i can do that. that's why it's imperative that in on awaken america now this is the kind of message this is the kind of you know outreach you're going to hear people awakening to the truth of the almighty god you know they are going through god's people are going through such a you know a broken heart there's such a brokenness there's such hopelessness there's such restlessness there's such a love of anger there's there's revenge there is so many things that are taking place in the house of God today, you know, in the house of God today. You know, when you see all of those things that are taking place, what do you do? You have to pray. We have to pray. All of you that are watching me, 
all of you that are watching me tonight, I'm praying for you. I don't know what situation you're going through. I don't know what, what you're feeling right now. But I want to pray for you. I want to believe God with you. Wherever you are, whichever country you're in, you're in Pakistan, you're in India, you're in China, you are in South America, you are in Africa, you're in Europe, you're in North America. I'm praying for you that you may be able to have your life back. You have your joy back. You have your peace back. I'm praying that God may fill you up with the Holy Spirit, that your life may never be the same again. It is my prayer. It is my prayer, my friends. It is my prayer. Do you agree? Do you believe that God can do this, you know, in your life? I totally agree. He can do that. This is what he say. He speaks to the church in Sardis. He says, I say these things. He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works. Now he's talking about works. You know, I know your works that you are you have a name in other words you've accumulated a name notoriety you are known everybody's praising you around the world everybody's talking about you he knows your works you you've been kind you've been giving you've been doing everything that you know that's what he's trying to tell him and you know you are alive but you're dead what is i what is this death he's talking about i want to know what he's talking about in verse 3, he says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Now, look at that warning. He says, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Now, he's telling us that we be watchful. Okay. He's telling us, be watchful. What does be watchful? Isn't that what we're looking out for? We, ever since 2000, we've been, been one, be watchful of COVID. Be watchful of sneezing. Six feet, you know, distance, long distance. Wash your hands. Do the, all the instructions we're supposed to take for us to be watchful that we don't get contaminated so we can stay alive, all right? So basically, when you look at that, the Word of God is telling us that we be watchful okay and strengthen the things that remain and that's the most vital part in other words we are in between life and losing all it means that we probably might be hoping okay to stay alive you know but guess what right now god's speaking to the church may the church wake up again from slumber May the church wake up. Let the church wake up. Not even may. Let the church wake up from slumber. How are you, you know? You know? Let the church wake up. Let the church dress the full amount of God. Let the church awaken from wherever it has been so it can now step into a dimension in God for us to take this season and hour for God. You have to hear this from me. You have to hear this word. This is not a man's season. This is not our season. This is not our time this is god's time you know just like it was god's time in revelation it is god's time for us it's god's time now okay god's taking over the universe as the world is organizing itself and having marching order okay all right as the world is is, is trying to march towards being anti-god as the church is marching towards being angry at God and walking having enmity with God and wanting to walk in you know in sinful, in sinful nature and abomination okay and iniquity as they continue to indulge themselves like the Bible said like in the days of Noah God saying this is my time this is my hour. You know, this is the moment that God begins to avail himself to do great and mighty things for such a time as this. I'm excited to share this message with you, saints, because when it's God's time, no man can put his name on it. No man can put his name on it. Only God, only God writes his name on everything he wants to do now. Okay? Only God does his work. But he, the good thing about it, saints, is that he's warning you and I. He's saying, 
I want you to be watchful in the days you live. You might think that your accomplishments, your name, your giving, your everything and all of that, that's the way it is. No, he's talking about perfection and integrity. The only time we miss our perfection and integrity before God is when we are lukewarm. Is when we are exhausted, is when we are tired, is when we are worn out, is when we cannot function at the highest level in God. Anytime the church cannot operate at the highest level, when it's weak, when it's down, guess what it does? It wants to pick worldly systems to help it survive. Yet the church has never needed any outside help. The church has only needed the Holy Spirit. The only one that can awaken us, the only one that can receive us, the only one that can heal us, the only one that can resuscitate us is not a politician, saints. It is the Holy Spirit of God. That's why he was given to us. He was given to us to awaken us, to uplift us, to give us the mark, the seal of the Holy Spirit that allows us to be the sons and daughters of the Most High God. He never gave us Rome. He never gave us the Persians. He never gave us the British Empire. He never gave us the American Empire. He gave us the Holy Spirit. Church, are you listening to me? Because the time in which the Revelation is written, it's when the Roman Empire was ruling and it was killing many Christians. It was putting many in jail. It was destroying everything in its way. It was anti-God. It was anti-everything. You hear me? And guess what? It smashed and destroyed all the foundations, thinking that it would break the foundations of the kingdom, but it never happened. Why? Because when the Holy Spirit is amongst God's people, it is very hard to be, for them to be destroyed. You didn't hear me. Let me repeat that again for you. When the Holy Spirit is amongst his people, it is very hard to be destroyed. But when the Holy Spirit has been lifted and is not there, Okay, we become an organization, we become tradition and traditions, we become religious. It's easy for us to be crushed because the system thinks we're just a people. And yet we are not just a people. We are built and anchored in God that no weapon formed against us can prosper. The only people who are awake can hear what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritually awake. They understand what I'm talking about. They understand the time's demand for it. Because to be awake is literally, is literally getting out of hell, okay? Getting out of hell, stepping out of hell. It's not easy. It is not easy to be awakened for God things. It's not easy. Let me tell you, I don't care whether you've been preaching for 30 years, for 40 years, especially when we've seen so many men of God who have, who have wrestled, they've fallen from the grace of God, who have missed the mark and everything. It's not easy to break out and be awake. It sounds easy. There used to be a time, several years ago, when I've been doing revivals around the country, we talked about awakening. You know, we talked about awakening. We did. You know, we did talk about awakening. And, uh, and, and, and you know, it was easy. It was, it was, you know, it was like, you know, easy word because we never needed it. You know, we never thought that, you know, an awakening is possible. And, um because we had everything we had our, our money we had our name we had uh, in god we trust we, we pretty much had every security we ever needed okay we, we didn't even have a crisis until september 11th came and gave us a check out when that happened we began to rethink about our faith we began to rethink about what with god where was the first place where people went when that happened they went to church they went to church okay why did they run the church because the inner man our spiritual man knows what we are running away from hear this very well our inner man our spiritual man knows what we are running away from when we're in the days of peace when we're in the days of abundance when we're in the days of goodness when we're in the days of good supply everybody's okay people don't pray people just take god for granted and everything like that but when the crisis hits when all hell breaks loose, the enemy, the first thing that happens for people to do is to try to try to find the God they walked away from. Try to find a God they for 
long time ago. They begin to cry, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I seek your face. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need you. Where are you, God? You promise. Where is my God? Where is this? Where is that? They begin to rumble. They begin to cry. They begin to wait upon God. They begin to do everything. It is that time. Where is that God? Where is our God today? But this is a time when God's people literally don't want to remember God because they're in slumber. They're alive but spiritually dead, spiritually disconnected. And that's what I want to deconstruct is that spiritual apathy, that spiritual death, death and deadness. That very thing that wants to kill your spiritual life and destroy you completely. I want to get rid of it by the Spirit of God. I want to let it be broken by the power of the risen Savior. Let it be. Let it be. If we can break through it, if we can break through it, saints of God, you know, we are going to see great and mighty things take place. If we can break through the slumber, if we can break through the lukewarmness, if we can break through anything that hinders the plan of God from taking root in the lives of God's people. Tonight, can we do that? Can we do that, saints? Can we do that, saints? Can we do that, saints? It is time. Time for the awakening. What time it is? Time to awaken. And I'm going to start breaking it down, breaking down for you, saints, right now. To awaken is to pull out of all the fear and all the shakiness and all the broken heartedness. To awaken is to break through the hopelessness. Actually, to awaken is to literally break out from hell. Because every demon in hell doesn't want you to operate at the highest level of your spiritual capacity the demons in hell do not want you to open the highest level of your capacity they don't want to they won't even let you go okay when you have those many chains when you have that resistance when you have that attack when you have so many things coming at you what do you do you have to force your way to break out you literally have to. The con when the conditions look the same, when everything looks the same and nothing has changed and nothing is moving in your direction, in your path, that's when you pray yourself out. That's when you say, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I am breaking out of this hell. Hell of the same results. Hell of the same habits. Hell of the prayerlessness, of the wickedness, of the sin. You know, hell of bitterness and unforgiveness. Everything that's not of God, you're breaking out of it. Come on, somebody say amen. That's what the church needs right now. The church has to force its way to break out of hell. Because hell wants to get a hold of the church and keep it subdued and subservient. And the church is now obeying and trying to bow down to politicians rather than bowing down to God. The church is getting weak. And anytime a weak church wakes up, when they want to give their allegiance to something else other than God. Yet it's God who determines the path and the destiny of the church. He's the one that has gotten us out of 2,000 years of hell and torture and persecution and killings and everything that has been taken. He's God who's been taking us out of everything the enemy thought he could have saints saints what can we do in our time in this season to awake like never before it is the living god who has preserved the church how can we forget the one who has preserved us when our enemies surrounded us when our enemies hated us when our enemies didn't have anything to do with us how can we forget what god Amen? How can we forget? How can we forget? Thank you. How can we forget? How can we forget where we come from? 
How can we forget the journey we've taken? When our enemies wanted to gnash their teeth and break us down and everything like that. How can the church forget where we've been? How can we try to sympathize with the world system that doesn't like us either? They don't want us to exist. How do we, you know, do that? How do we get to that place? Why can we break out of that? Why don't we one leg out of the world and just be for the kingdom of God? The reason why we are not awake is because we have compromised with the world. Can I say that? We have compromised with the world. I'm not telling, I'm not saying about them. I'm talking about we have compromised with the world. We need to break away from Babylon. Once we break out from Babylon, the greatest anointing, the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost is going to be unleashed in our season and our time. And I guarantee you, great and mighty things will take place in our day. The greatest anointing. We cannot forget, church, America, we cannot, get, we cannot forget where God found us. America, we cannot forget where the Lord God found us. No, no, no. Not when the enemy is fighting tooth and nail to shut down the voice of the church. Not when the enemy is doing everything behind our back to shut us up completely so we never have a place to worship but to be persecuted and going through a wall. Some of you don't even believe. Some of you don't be believe this can happen. But it's happened before. I've been through it. It has happened before. It can happen anywhere. The rest of all the other guys are not the enemies of the state. We, the body of Christ, are. And we've been, for the most part, 2,000 years ago. We have been. And guess what? The gates of hell have tried, but they have not prevailed. And what I'm saying to you, you might as well, you might as well wake up from your slumber. You might as well wake up from your sleep. You might as well prepare yourself to walk into the fullness of God. Number one, you've got to pull out of your shakiness and your shame. And the, you have to break out of, you know, the quagum is, is the broken heart. I'm going to break this up, you know, throughout the week. This the steps I'm talking about. The, you cannot be awake, okay? You cannot be awakened still nursing the wounds of a broken heart. You cannot. If you're still nursing a broken heart, if you're still, you know, with all the regrets and everything, like you cannot be awake. You can't. You're held back by all the yokes. I always say, I don't want to be tied to my past. I don't want to be tied to everything where I come from. I don't want to. I broke away from it. I forgot about it. I want to walk in the food. And the moment I broke away from it, guess what? Revival began to take place in my life. And I've been able to take revival to the rest of the world. Don't want to. So for you to be awake, there's got to be a dynamite power of God. That's why I told you, in the world system, they are getting power. They are getting power just about this month okay let me give you an example just about this month if you go to most of the gyms except on the exception of the pandemic on the except the gyms are packed up because you know what the radio networks have been saying that all the food you ate in november thanksgiving and all the food you ate in december you might as well want to crush it off and all they're giving them tablets they're giving them you know you know all of those kind of things guess what and no so everybody is right in the gym trying to pump it up to get more energy you know, to get more power, to get, you know, if the people of the world understand a message on the radio station and they can go out and start pumping it out and start trying to make something happen of their life, what about the church? What can the church do right now? What can the body of Christ do right now? The body of Christ can awake, the body of Christ can pray, the body of Christ can seek God while he can be found, the body of Christ can receive the power power of God the body of Christ can grab a hold of God and we can take this season and 2021 by storm we can take it for God we don't need to go to Washington DC too much 
all we need is the anointing and our steps will be revived in the name our churches will be revived god's people will be revived in the name of jesus saints that's how i see it and that's how i know it that's how i see it and that's how i know it that's how i see it in the word of god today you know you know why because you know it's difficult difficult that's how i know it it is very difficult to just wake up in the morning and say i'm gonna wake how many times most of you have tried to wake up to pray and nothing happened you've tried to pray and seek god and fast we just finished our 21 days of prayer very powerful a few people managed to be with us we the good thing about it we had so many people who joined us over 25 30,000 people joined us in that prayer we led the prayer saints saints it is time in the presence of god right now because being awake is no longer a luxury or an ideal you know you have to remember when to pray you have to remember and you have to remember how to pray you have to be assigned and awake like the word of god say you are alive but are dead spiritually your spiritual thermometer your spiritual antenna your spiritual life is what god's asking of you can give can you give it back to him can you give it back to him can you give him your life right now can you tell the lord take your life take my life god take my life and use it as you will can you tell god can you tell god take my life right now and put a spark of fire in it put put a spark of fire in it i need the fire of the holy ghost in my life now can you do that i know you can i know you will i know you're gonna need it somewhere or the other you are going to need god let me say this to you openly somewhere or the other something is gonna force you to seek god one or the other the days we're living in we are on the verge of being forced to literally seek god while he can be found and it's now and it is now you're gonna need God. you are going to need god while he can be found while he can be found he says seek me while i can be found that means there's a time when he can be found or when you cannot trust him or you can feel him seek him while he can be found because how do you resuscitate that the good thing about god this let me say this to you the good thing about god saints is this he says you still have a little life left you know you still have a little life left that's why i say that little life you still have left i can put a spark in it and awaken you into your purpose that's what god's saying to us the thing about god he's saying you know what the little life you have left the little joy the little encouragement the little faith you have in you you know i know what you're going through i know the struggle i know the pain i know you've tried to get this thing to work but the little life you have in you is what i can use in order to unleash the mighty revival in your life the question is can you give the little can you give that little left the little candle of life and light inside of you can you give it to god Can you do can you do that? Can you can you give it to God? Can you give it to God? Do you remember? Do you remember the man that was left on the road to die? The story of the good Samaritan? The Bible say he was beat up for the dead. Remember? He was beat up. The thugs made him and beat him up and they wounded him. And the Bible tells us that several people passed by him and they went and a good Samaritan stopped while he was bleeding while he was bleeding because anytime you start to bleed you know you're losing blood and as you begin to lose blood you're losing life but the Bible tells us that 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 the good Samaritan made him at the brink of death he was he was half dead he was not completely dead he was a little bit there beginning to breathe his last 
and the and, and the good Samaritan stops and the Bible says he got across and started to bind him with oil Jesus used the narrative in this story to give us a picture of what happens you know and the moment he started to get the oil which is the representative of the anointing and he started to put the oil into the wounds okay all of a sudden the guy that was supposed to be completely dead okay when the blood stops when you stop bleeding you begin to get more life that means that something has stopped when when your life that's been bleeding because of what people have done to you because of the lies and deception and disappointments and lack and everything that has happened when all of the bleeding that you've gone through stops you start to live again and you know what happens the first sign that shows you awake you want to hear it do you want to hear it the first sign that happens you want to hear it it is the spirit of joy joy is an indicator that you have been awake spiritually joy is an indicator the first time you want to know you're awake i will know it by your joy i would know what but anytime you're around people that are unhappy that are so torn apart they're so wounded they're complaining and everything like that whatever is happening just know there is something bleeding on the inside of them something is bleeding on the inside of them they have no joy and you're looking at the church that's losing its joy that's losing its unity that's losing everything and yet God says I want to release the spirit of joy in the house because joy is an indicator that a revival has taken place on the inside what used to be death what used to be the past what used to be wounds what used to be disappointment what used to be setbacks what used to be hindrance has already been broken and God is unleashing the goodness of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's a sign. That's a sign. So the Bible tells us that when this guy received the oil, the good Samaritan pours oil and clothes him and bandages him and covers him okay and then he takes him off the road and he takes him all of a sudden the Bible literally tells us that he he got he took him to the to to the to to, to, to a small clinic to be fixed which is a metaphor Jesus was using the metaphor of the coming of the Holy Spirit Jesus met us we were wounded we were torn apart sin had killed us sin had messed us up and Jesus went to the cross and when he hung on the cross he breathed his life but the life he breathed he poured it into us so that we might live again so that we can be revived again so we can see the hope again so that we can now rejoice in the Lord and in the power of his might and if we can do that saints oh my God oh my God they can be a mighty visitation who's listening to me who's watching what I'm talking about tonight in the name of Jesus every wound every disappointment every pain the church has taken a beating the body of Christ has taken a beating we've lost our loved ones we've lost preachers we've lost singers we've lost so many people that have been hit with scandals and everything like that we've go, we, we've gone through the grieving of a lot of things we've been up and down and everything and yet God's still saying to us saints of God children of God he's still saying revive what remains don't cry about what let what is left don't cry about what you lost begin to rejoice over what you have left right now revival is always about what is left not what was taken away not what was stolen and that's what we need right now God saying do you have a little power in you do you have a little Holy Ghost in you do you have a little bit of anointing God wants to use that do you have five loaves of bread do you have that's what I want to use What do you have left? What do you have left? What do you have left? Whatever you have left, God wants to use it. The awakening will only take place if you give God what you have left. Stop blaming yourself. 
Stop cutting yourself down. Stop being judgmental about yourself. Stop being anxious for nothing. Stop going through all the emotions. And guess what? Get back your joy and get back what you lost. And guess what? You who has been down, you'll be up in the name of Jesus. You, you, it's you that I'm talking about, my friend. It is you. Don't say them. Don't say them. Don't say, you know what? I'm a grown up. I've been in the church for a long time. I know the Hebrew, the Greek, and everything. It is you. It's actually people who think they have known God for a long time who are spiritually dead right now because they think when they quote scriptures, when they think they're going to heaven, they think they're all about this. And God's saying to them, like He was telling John in Revelation, I say, strengthen that remains. Be watchful that you don't die completely and you lose my presence and you lose my power. Get it back by the Spirit of God. That's what I'm talking about, America. That's what I'm talking about, Africa. That's what I'm talking about, Europe. That's what I'm talking about, Asia. That's what I'm talking about, Pakistan and India and South America and all the nations. I'm talking about the body of Christ awakening for such a time as this to wear the full armor of God so we can see the great awakening in our day in the name of Jesus. What do you have left? After what you've gone through, what you have left? What do you have left? You have your Bible. You have your Bible. You have a little bit of your prayer life. You still have do. You can turn to God. Remember Hezekiah? Hezekiah was on the brink of death. I think it was Hezekiah. And the Bible says he was on the brink of death. And guess what happened? He turned to God. And when he turned to God, he reminded God, God, remember what I did. Remember the good works I did. Remember that he reminded God. And when he reminded God, God had favor on him. You remember Job in the Bible. Job lost everything. But in the last minute of his days when he had lost everything, he realized that he can bless God and not die. And what he had lost, the Bible said God gave him back everything that he had lost. Do you hear me? The Bible shows us so many instances when men and women of God were left with just nothing. What about the widow? She was just left with a little bit, a little bit, so she dies. It's always at the brink of total destruction and total annihilation. When the enemy thinks he's about to take you out, he's disrupting everything. He's disrupting your ministry. It's always at the brink that God comes in and says, you know what? I will pick you up. I will raise you up. It's always when Peter starts to walk on water, then, then he weavers and he cries to God and says, My Lord, will you save me? And Jesus comes and picks him up. It's that moment, it is this moment that God's saying to the church, Can the church cry out to me? Can you cry out to me? Can you seek my face? Can you know me? Can my people who are called by my name turn from their wicked ways? and seek my face and I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. Can my people, if God's people can do that, if God's people can do that, if God's people can awaken, if God's people can believe, if God's people can stand, if God's people can know, if God's people can seek the face of God, the heavens will open, there will be a visitation. For some of you, the words I'm saying to you are just falling off your heads because you think you know too much, because you think you are there. You think, but let me say to you, it's always people that are on the brink of death who never hear truth, who never hear the truth. But the people who are about to know, who are about to be revived, every little help, every little help works. Every little help works. Every little revelation can work. A little bit of encouragement, a little bit of you know advice can help. The people who still have a purpose for their dreams, who says, I ain't getting out of here until God does the rest of everything. Guys, in 2021, I am loaded for the church. I'm anointed for the church. I'm anointed to the church. It's time to get up. It's time to wake up in the name of Jesus. The word of God just told us today, be watchful and be awake. And in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14, he says, Awaken all you sleeper. Arise from the dead and Christ will shine upon you. That is Ephesians. He says, awaken all sleeper. You've been sleeping spiritually? Are you sleeping over your spiritual life and over your, no wonder the enemy is slamming your joy the enemy is slamming your 
the, the enemy has been slamming everything you're trying to do. Why? Because when the enemy is raging on the outside, it's no time for you to sleep. When the enemy is raging, it's for you to stand firm in the armor of God and begin to resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. I wish you invite somebody. I wish you invite somebody. I wish you invite somebody to watch this. Invite somebody to watch this. Before I close, I got to tell you, you know, the time has come. Whatever's been holding you back has got to let you go. And this week, we're going to continue with this. It is an, an awakening week. It is an awakening week. It is an, an awakening week. It's going to be dynamite. It's going to be an, you know, we are in the month that we are in preparation for Wild Trumpet Television. You know, Wild Trumpet Television is going to be on air very soon. We are excited about that. We are praying for a lot of great things to happen. We are already making preparations for what all our guests who are going to be coming from town and everything. We are excited because now we will be 24-7 being able to air all around the world and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations and the end shall come. I'm relentless. I'm determined. Come what may is for me to extend the word of the kingdom. You guys are going to be able to watch kingdom men of God who are sold out for God to do great and mighty things for the Lord because we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ it is the power of the risen Christ therefore tonight saints I leave you with this what do you have left because the word of God say that little power whatever you have left God can work with it bless you I love you and I bless God for you Let's rejoice again in the name of Jesus. Glory to God.